this video, I'm going to show you how we can implement periodic boundary conditions. Uh, we're going to solve the, the partial differential equation dc dt is equal to um, some diffusion coefficient times d squared c dx squared. And we're going to use a more complicated discretization than we saw in class, mostly just to highlight the, the points of the periodic boundary condition. So here's our discretization. Really, the periodic boundary condition is independent of discretization. Um, the same ideas are, are applied to all discretization. So I thought this would be interesting because this uses two neighbors in each direction. So we have our ci point, ci minus one, ci minus two to the left, ci plus one, and ci plus two to the right. So that's what we want to discretize using um, our periodic boundary conditions. So whenever I do periodic boundary conditions, I always sketch myself a little picture so I know what's going on. So here's my picture. I'm going to number my, my nodes. So I'm going to have one two, three. Here I'm going to have nx, uh, nx minus one, nx minus two, and this is somewhere in the, we have a bunch of points, more points in the middle. Okay, so if you're at any of the interior points, you can just use your standard discretization. If you are at a boundary, you need to use a periodic boundary condition. And the key of the periodic boundary condition is at the first point, is the same as the last point. So these two are the same. So if I'm at point one or point nx, it doesn't matter. I should have the same value. Which means that if I'm sitting at point one, so if I'm here at point one and I discretize this equation, this discretization uses two points to the right. So this is my first point to the right, and then my second point to the right is over there. To the left, I'm also going to need two points. But what are those points? Well, if I look at what's going on on the other side, point one is the same as point nx. The point to my left is the same as nx minus one. And the point even farther out is nx minus two. In most discretizations, you won't go that far, but there's no reason you can't. So I thought it'd be interesting to show this example. So if we write this discretization at uh, i is equal to one, it would look like c1 at the new time minus c1 at the old time all over dt is equal to minus c. And here I have my i minus 2 term. And my i minus 2 term is going to be this nx minus 2. This is nx minus 2, because that's the second point to my left. I read the nth time plus 16 times c i minus 1. Well, the, that's the point to, just to my left, which is just n x minus 1. So this is n x minus 1. Sorry, I forgot c. 16 c at n x minus 1. Evaluate the nth time. We're going to have minus 30 times our, our location, the ith location which is a C1 n plus 16 times the point to our right, which the point to our right is just the second point, which is C2 n. And finally, we have minus C3 n, which is the point to our right. And this is all divided by uh, 12 dx squared. That's just that discretization. So the key is just to know who your neighbors are. Know that the point to your right is uh, 2, the point to your left is nx minus 1. And if you need to go farther out, you can do that. Um, because this thing is just periodic, it just keeps going on forever. Um, if we're at the other end, if we're at uh, i is equal to nx, then we could write the discretization. We can also use the fact that point one is the same as point nx, and we can write that c at nx at the new time is equal to the value that we just computed for c1. So the new, sorry, the new value at c1, we're going to transfer that over to c nx at the new time. Now, if you wanted to write the discretization here, you could. There's no reason why you, you could not. Um, you'd actually get exactly what we just wrote here. It'd be exactly the same. Um, because nx minus 1 is your neighbor to your left, nx minus 2 is the second neighbor to your left. If we start writing those in up here, we have these as our neighbors. And if we go the other way, we have uh, 
point two and an end point three. And nx is the same as one, so if you look at this equation, it's the point two to your left, nx minus two, point one to your left, nx minus one, myself, one or nx doesn't matter. Point to my right, two, point two to my right, three. So we'll get the exact same discretization if we did if we wrote the entire thing out at the point nx. Um, so hopefully that clarifies how you can um, write these equations at the boundaries. And that you just write in MATLAB. Um, so in MATLAB I'd write these two equations after I compute all interior points. It doesn't matter if you do it before or after, but compute all interior points and then apply these. Um, the interesting thing with this discretization, this kind of side note, um, if I'm at point two, I also need to go to the other side because I need two points to my to my left. Um, because if I'm here at point two, I need that one and I need that one, and I have these two to my right. So let me just write that down and then we'll be done. So if I'm at uh, i is equal to two. I can say C2 at the new time minus C2 at the old time all over delta T is equal to minus C, now this is the point 2 to my left, which is Cnx minus 1 plus 16 times the point just to my left, which is C1 out of the nth time minus 30 times myself, which is C2n. Uh, plus 16 times the point to my right, which is C3n, minus the point 2 to my right, which is C4n. So you can do this periodic boundary condition for any points that intersect the boundaries. Now this is a, this type of uh, discretization where it happens at the second and the second point in only happens when you have these very large stencils, which in the 303 class we don't typically cover these stencils. We typically do three-point stencils. But I thought that this would uh, show the point about PR boundary conditions maybe a little bit more. So that's all for this video.